Hi, welcome to part two of my Nixie Tube Display Driver project. Uh, let's have another little look at just driving these Nixie Tubes because there's a couple of issues uh, outstanding before we actually go into a, a final uh, solution that we uh, make into a schematic and a PCB. Now the first issue is, do you actually need a high voltage uh, driver transistor here, be it within uh, the like the custom microchip uh, serial array that we looked at or individual uh, driver transistors or a transistor array like a ULN2003, do you actually need the full compliance voltage of 170 volts or like say 200 volts uh, nominal to drive these things? Well that's you know a reasonable question to ask and I actually um, answered this in a separate video on my second EEV blog channel uh, just an hour or two after uploading my previous video. So those on my who are subscribed to my second channel, and I highly rec recommend you do because occasionally I put updates and other uh, miscellaneous videos like that, um, I'll link that in. But uh, rather than just shoot that again, I'll just uh, display that video here for you about the open circuit voltage drop of the Nixie tubes because some people have asked uh, there will be a voltage drop on the Nixie tubes on the pins that you aren't actually switching on with your transistors. So all the off pins will have so much of a voltage drop on uh, via the Nixie uh, tube itself that you can get away with low voltage uh, transistors. Well, hey, we've got some Nixie tubes. Let's measure it. Um, I'm powering the Nixie tube from 170 uh, volts here through the 22K uh, resistor nominal that I was going to use. And people wanted to know what is the open voltage on the other pins, i.e. when uh, they're switched off by the uh, driver. And can you actually get away with a lower voltage driver, etc.? Well, let's actually uh, take one here and let's go around and measure 49 volts, 24 volts quite some variation. 43, whoops, 122, ouch, 118, 69, 40, 47, 123 odd. There you go. So there is quite a significant voltage on there, so 120, 223 volts there on a couple of pins, um, that means that just for this particular Nixie tube, there's obviously great variation in this, so I could go measure all eight, but uh, yeah, and you're probably not going to get this from any uh, data sheet. So that's the kind of open circuit voltage you need uh, with standing voltage, the voltage rating of your driver uh, transistor or your driver, you know, transistor array or your whatever you're going to uh, use to actually uh, drive this thing. So yeah, I'm afraid you can't get away with relying on the voltage drop of the Nixie tube itself. So. I hope that cleared that up. And by the way, if you're wondering what the uh, voltage is when you strap all the pins together, tie them all together like this, well, you might have guessed. Let's have a look. Bingo, 125 odd volts. So it basically uh, ties it to the highest voltage uh, drop or lowest voltage drop of any one of those uh, particular um, segment uh, display. I don't like using the word segment. One of those particular digits in there. So as you saw there, we could get over 120 volts uh, open circuit float voltage on some of those pins. Yes, some of them were quite low that you could use low voltage uh, output drivers like a ULN2003 uh, or any other sort of like jelly bean uh, low voltage driver transistor, but hey, some of them aren't. So, you know, we can go measure all the Nixie tubes, but hey, we've got a case where the tubes I've got in hand have up to like 120 volts and it could even be higher than that. So obviously we need driver transistors rated to that sort of voltage. But as a few people pointed out, the classic uh, 74141 driver chip, which is now uh, obsolete, although yes, some people have pointed out that some company in Russia still manufactures it or something like that. I don't necessarily want to uh, use that. I want to use a uh, more modern, readily available solution. Anyway, they pointed out that that 74141 is actually a, a fairly lowish voltage rating on those open collector output driver uh, transistors in there. And fair enough. It's, you know, 50, 60, 70 volts, something like that. So how can these things work? Well, if you have a look at the internal diagram for this thing, aha, look at the output pins. You can see that there's actually Zener diode clamps 
on the output. So that's how they're getting away with it. So what if we actually implemented a Xenodio clamping system on a more modern uh, jelly bean driver that we have available? Well, the classic ULN2003, you can do this. And we can actually use these to drive the Nixie tube displays, although there might be a potential issue, which we'll just uh, verify here. Now, uh, if you're not familiar with the ULN2003, it's a uh, an array of uh, seven high voltage uh, drivers transistors by high voltage I mean 50 volts maximum rating so obviously on their own not good enough for driving our Nixie tubes and inside each one is an open collector uh, driver transistor a high voltage type but in this case high voltage means 50 volts 50 volt maximum rating not good enough for our Nixie tubes on its own but if you have a look at the internal uh, structure of these things then they've also got a common uh, diode array on all seven outputs like this tied together and then it goes to the comp pin. So, aha, what we can do is we can then hook this up to our Zener diode clamp like that and bingo, we can clamp all of these pins. So imagine this output here is driving our Nixie tube. It's going to one of the open pins on our Nixie tube here, okay? And it's at 120 volts or whatever. This pin is at 120 volts. Then we're gonna, it's gonna be, this diode here is gonna be forward uh, biased. And then that is gonna be clamped to a maximum, uh, you know, let's say we used a, you know, a 48 volt. Zener on there, you know, anything somewhere lower than our uh, maximum 50 volt uh, rating of our driver transistor, then obviously this pin here is going to be clamped at 48 volts plus the diode drop here, so 48.6, meh, whatever, still just call it the uh, clamp voltage, and Bob's your uncle. We're protecting that transistor, but because they're all tied together common like this, all of the outputs are basically going to be tied to, uh, you know, the same maximum uh, clamp voltage there. But hey, this is a way that we can use the Jelly Bean ULN2003 because these things are as common as mud. And a few people have asked what uh, I mean by a Jelly Bean component. Well, a Jelly Bean component is one that's super cheap, super available, usually, uh, you know, almost by definition available from many different uh, manufacturers. So, you know, 7400 series logic, 4000 series CMOS logic, uh, you know, generic, uh, you know, 741 op amps and uh, ones like this the ULN2003 it's actually a series the ULN2000 uh, series drivers there's different versions there's a 2004 and whatnot and they all have different uh, pros and cons there's even like a low voltage drive uh, version in this that's specifically designed for you know 3.3 volt logic input but but the standard ULN2003 or 2003A available from you know, countless different manufacturers for, you know, cents each or whatever they uh, cost really cheap. Um, they can easily accept uh, 3 volts input, 3.3 uh, volt logic or 5 volt logic. Not so great if you're driving hundreds of milliamps through the, if you really want to turn them on hard, turn on this output transistor really hard, then, you know, the input uh, driving voltage can matter. But we're only talking about like a milliamp or two here, not a problem. So we can easily get away with, uh, uh, you know, CMOS TTL uh, type compatible 3.3 volt and 5 volt logic input uh, drive on this transistor. The basic difference between the different families in here is usually the uh, base resistor because they've got a base resistor built in and it's actually not just one transistor, it's actually a Darlington pair. So it's actually uh, two transistors to give you extra gain there. But basically the different families just have different value dropper resistors in there. But I mentioned a potential issue here, and let's just have a quick look at it and do a quick measurement. Now, uh, let's assume that we've got our Nixie uh, driver here. We've got our 22K dropper resistor, got our 120 volt supply up here. We've got one of the uh, transistors turned on here. So one of the outputs of the ULN2003 is on. So it's basically uh, because we've chosen 22K there, it's around about two milliamps um, that we're gonna have flowing. But all these other ones are turned off. All these transistors are switched off and we've just got basically these forward bias diodes 
hopefully, depending on the voltage output here, if it's higher than uh, the rated voltage of the Zener, then it's going to be forward voltage. If it's lower, as you saw the measurements before, some of them are, then, hey, it's not going to, it's going to be reverse bias. But some of these outputs are going to be up to, as we measured before, like 120 odd volts or something like that. So we're going to actually get current flowing through the 22K resistor here through, let's say this is 120 volts here, open circuit voltage, then it's going to flow through here down and be clamped by this 48 volt Zener diode. So how much leakage current do we get total out of all these other pins um, if we clamp this here? So I'm just going to uh, do a simple measurement here. Don't have a 48 volt uh, Zener to hand, but hey, I'll just use like a 30 volt Zener. We'll just whack it in um, and see what we get. So let's give it a ball. Okay, so what I've got here, if I've got a digit turned on, digit zero, whatever, it's a random one, uh, 170 volt supply up here, I've got my 22k drop resistor, I'm measuring the currents, about 1.6 milliamps through that uh, 22k resistor, and what I've done is I've shorted all the other pins, all the other spare ones on the Nixie tube here, uh, shorted those out. So I've got that going through a 30 volt uh, Zener here. The reason I'm shorting all of them together is sort of like a worst case thing because uh, these uh, diodes, because they're all going to a common terminal, could be doing that anyway. So um, I'm now going to whoop, measure the... There we go, 1.6 milliamps uh, flowing through the 22K resistor. I'm going to uh, measure the leakage current um, through all the other pins shorted together and through with that uh, 30 volt Zener clamp. So here we go. Bingo, that didn't change. We're getting in about 0.33 milliamps, uh, 330 microamps leakage current shorting all the other pins together into a 30 volt Zener. So that's meh, it's not a problem. And the Nixie tube is still working just fine. It makes absolutely no difference to the brightness whatsoever. So looks like that solution will work a treat. Now, the other issue uh, that I didn't really cover in the previous video about, I uh, looked at some uh, of the microchip uh, serial driver chips, um, and some of them looked fairly ideal, except they had totem pole outputs. And what a totem pole output is, is an output that instead of just having an open collector, like this one, i.e. the collector pin is just open, it's not connected to anything else inside the uh, chip, Inside here, these are not open collector outputs. They're what's called a totem pole because they've got one top and bottom. They look like an old Indian, Indian totem pole anyway, something like that. It means that it's got a, a, a transistor which actively drives low and a transistor which actively uh, pulls it high as well. So it's often called a push-pull output uh, driver totem pole whatever. Now, there's a there potential issue here, and it can be a major one, and so we'll actually measure this and show why totem pole outputs aren't really suitable. Uh, we really need an open collector or open drain output uh, like this. I've just drawn generic FETs in there. Don't worry about that. They can be MOSFETs, they can be BJTs, whatever. Um, now, let's assume that we've got the 170 volt supply, 22k dropper, we've got our Nixie tube, we've got one of these segments, of course, turned on, being driven low, but we've got all the other, um, you know, nine outputs here actually, um, you know, just floating, flapping around in the breeze. Now, if we're driving it with one of these microchip drivers that has a totem pole output, it's got a high HV pin on, uh, a high voltage active pin like that. So surely you would put, you would take that up to your 170 volt supply. That's naturally where you'd put it. But, aha, uh -huh, will that cause a problem if this output transistor shorting on, shorting all these other pins back up to the 170 volt supply? I think we might come a gutser. So I won't experiment with my good Nixie tubes. I uh, remembered that I had um, some that I think it was Fran was it who sent these into a very early mailbag? I've actually got uh, three others. They are uh, basically the same, the uh, 12B uh, type. So I'll use one of these. These are, uh, look, been desoldered from uh, boards. Obviously, they've still got the <laughs> some of the uh, pads left on there, have they? Oops. Um, anyway, we'll try one of these because, you know, we don't want to damage one of our precious Nixie tubes that I'm going to use for my 8 display solution.
Okay, so what I've got here is uh, the Nixie tube hooked up, 170 volt supply, 22k dropper resistor. I've got one of the segments turned on, it's segment uh, zero again, not that it matters. Okay, what I'm going to do now is actually short one of the other outputs here, uh, well, Nixie tube uh, pins, to the 170 volt supply and we're going to measure the current doing that. So I've got my second current meter hooked up uh, to the positive uh, supply here. So that's the, uh, on the top of the 22k resistor there. So right on the 170 volt. So let's hook on one of the other pins and I don't think it's going to be pleasant. Whoop. Night milliamps. Uh, the current for the other one is just through the 22k resistor. Well, yeah, that's not very pretty. So let's have a look at uh, the display. What happens to it when we do that? So we've got 1.5 milliamps at the moment. I'll turn on. I'll connect one of the other pins. And yeah, the zero still lights up, but uh, we're drawing like eight, nine milliamps, something like that. Oops. So that's of course undesirable for the uh, health of our Nixie tube and a reason why we can't use one of these totem pole output drivers. But hey, what if we hook the HV pin to the other side of the 22K resistor like that? So we're basically only shorting out the pin. Well, we can try that too. I'll just change that from here to here. All right, let's try that. Hook it up to a random pin and Look at that. It's only oh, 100 micro, 80 microamps, something like that. It's very nice, as you'd expect. Um, shorting out the any of the floating Nixie pins to the positive uh, anode up there is no problems whatsoever. So you could potentially hook that HV pin back up to on the other side of your dropper over here. But the problem with that is uh, these, as you saw on the microchip jata seat, these are high number of output drivers on the one chip. They're like 32 or 64 output drivers and you've got separate dropper resistors for each one of your Nixie tubes like this. So you'd have to dedicate one chip to one Nixie tube like that to be able to tie that individual pin back. I wouldn't like to uh, tie them across multiple Nixie tubes. You could probably get away with it, but uh, like, just no. And of course, some of these driver chips also had a built-in uh, current source as well down in here. You could actually, a bias uh, pin, a bias voltage that you didn't need the dropper resistor up here. And that's another thing which maybe you could potentially use to get away with using a totem pole output driver, but so it's possible, but yeah, you've got traps like that. Just be careful how you hook it up. But anyway, I don't think I'm going to be using a totem pole output solution. So there you go. That's just a couple of extra uh, measurements there. I hope you uh, enjoyed that. So what I'm going to do is I think, like I do like the microchip uh, driver solutions. They're really good, but some people have, uh, well, not complained, but they've, you know, um, said, hey, wouldn't it be nice if you could just use a jelly bean solution that everyone can get in every country, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Well, yeah, all right, let's go. Instead of a discrete transistor solution, I don't like that. I think I'll actually implement the Jelly Bean ULN uh, 2003 with a um, suitably uh, high voltage uh, Zener on the common pin. The only issue with this is that they come in, you know, packs of seven. Um, you get seven drivers like this. So, yeah, it doesn't even drive one Nixie tube. So, you know, you've got to share drivers across multiple Nixies and uh, stuff like that. But, yeah, that's not really an issue. And also uh, strapping uh, the unused pins together like this to a, uh, in this case, we're, you know, a clamp voltage because we're going to, we've measured like 125 volts on here. So we're definitely going to, with all the pins uh, shorted together, which they do with the diode. So um, basically we're applying what's called a pre-bias to all these pins. And um, some designs do this actually deliberately. But one of the uh, common reasons is that, uh, yeah, you can uh, use lower voltage output uh, driver transistors by applying this uh, pre bias uh, clamp, in this case via uh, diodes, and that's how some designs actually do it. They use discrete diodes as well. This uh, pre-bias, and they actually hook it up to a particular uh, supply, is to prevent some of the uh, segments, uh, some of the digits from actually uh, glowing due to leakage currents and stuff like that, but it, you know, it's not really an issue here. Sometimes like this will go away, depending on if you put like a filter on uh, front, like a red filter or whatever, um, orange filter on uh, front of the uh, particular display, but we're not too 
concerned about that. I mean, we're really getting into the nitty gritty uh, details of Nixie tubes and and particular uh, variations between tubes and manufacturers and brands and all that sort of jazz. You know, it's yeah. Anyway, this is often called uh, pre bias as well, and that's kind of sorta what we're doing here.